So I'm gonna call this video one of the Scorpion uh, re rebuild. It's not actually, I'm not gonna restore it, so I don't wanna use the word restore. I'm gonna get it close, but you know, minus a track system, you can't restore it. I'm not gonna use the same, you know, they had the gas tank in, in the frame. I'm not gonna go that route. And they had the hole that went up through the fiberglass. I've already fiberglassed that off. And I'm not I'm not gonna have it. I'm just gonna have it where you gotta raise the hood, fill it with gas. That's for another video. I'm gonna call this video one. And I, I really wanted to document this scorpion. So I'm gonna try to keep the scorpion videos numbered and separate. So those of you who just wanna follow the scorpion. Unfortunately, I didn't really I guess I somewhat put a video of the Scorpion carburetor. Coincidentally, that was the first thing that I did. So um, now it's going to be the motor. And I wasn't filming back in the day when I did the fiberglass. But after the motor, we'll hit the metal work. Start to retrofit everything together. And because the way the hood mounts on a Scorpion, I don't like, we're definitely going to do something different. So stay tuned, guys. And um, if you want to watch this series, you know, subscribe and and watch and, and please comment. I'm no expert on these old sleds. I, I do love them. And I, I now have four vintage sleds. Currently, none of them run. And I would I would love the input of those who know and those who came before me. All right, guys, this is day one, video one, really, of starting this uh, Sax motor. It's a 290. It's out of my '69 Scorpion snowmobile. I know the snow the snowmobile itself sat in a guy in a farmer's field for many years before I bought it as a project and then it sat for a few years so far so who knows the total years I do have a donor motor but this is the original motor and it really didn't look that bad I thought the cylinder itself was frozen it was not um, or the piston in the cylinder but if you can see down in there there is some rust this guys this does not turn at all so I don't know if it's the bearings I'm working my way down to it I've got to go I don't have a wrench big enough to get that bolt off to where then I can pull uh, the clutch off also and yet another side or size I gotta get a socket for that so that's kind of my my next step of this proje project is to disassembly. I know most likely those bearings are rusted solid, would be my guess. But I'll show you the cylinder here. It really is not that bad. I might just clean it up by honing it. And so far that's my game plan, a little bit of honing, using the same piston, getting two new rings. So far that is my, my game plan. And when I took this guy apart, there was not a gasket in sight. Now I know that these have gasket sets, so I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why there's literally, there wasn't a top gasket, there wasn't a bottom gasket. There weren't even gaskets. Well, there wasn't a muffler when I, I got it. There was a carb attached and there was no gasket to that. So that's as far as I've gotten so far. I'm still in the disassembly. And I'll update you kind of when I know what I'm gonna do. I know this thing was full of, I don't know if it was mice, rats, squirrels or what, but the whole thing was full of um, various little seeds and nuts and, and, and just dirt and debris. It was, it was pretty bad. 
Uh, a lot of people I talked to are like, because I rebuilt that carb. I got photos of that. I don't think I made a video. Hey, I did post a video on that carb with the red uh, fuel inlet. But, you know, some guys were like, just put that carb on there and try to turn it over. And, of course, there's no turning nothing over. She is froze up. So... I'll add more to this video before I post it. So guys, this bolt is proving to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> it will not loosen up. We've heated it before. I've put, um, I don't know what the crap that stuff is called, but stuff that you put on, you know, to loosen rusty bolts in this situation. See our piston down there. I finally got this to move. That took forever and a day. But there's no way that this will rotate. Just cleaning up some parts. I've been scrubbing on them. They've just sat for so many years. So that's where we're at with this motor. We can't really go further until we can get this bolt off and then pull that clutch off. So. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe and click down to the notification and um, tell us, like, tell us anything, like, something like that. Tell us how to get rid of this bolt. I'm thinking using a lot of heat would get rid of this bolt. A lot of heat. So we're going to use all the heat until this bolt is burnt. Very good, Chante. And then the insides will get unrusted because it will get too hot. There you go. Word from the Chante. Come yeah. on, help her. All right, over and out. We'll work on this bolt. Yeah, work on this bolt. Yeah, okay, I got it. Record it. Uh, guys, we got it on. We uh, got the bolt off. Tell yeah. them how we got it off, Chante. Well, what did we do? Uh, we put a lot of heat. I knew my um, thing was going to work. Did you hit it with the hammer? Is yes. that what did it? Yes. And the fire. The fire, I knew metal would burn because metal will burn like crazy. Two days, guys. Two days to get this bolt off. And but we, it has sat there for probably who knows how many years in the field. Yep. So many. Alright, Tony. And bring it to a close. We um now guys, yep. the way you pull this, and I'll show you in the future video, are you filming? Yeah. The way you get this clutch off. It's with fire. No. So much we're fire gonna, and hammer. We're and gonna that. take we're gonna, here guys. Mm -hmm. So we got the bolt out. Um that's my helper. That's my my chante. But we got this bolt out with two days of heat and spraying, heat and spraying. You can still see it smoking. Now the way we're going to pull this clutch, we're going to put a piece of round stock down there. Believe it or not, that rests against that lip on that bolt. Then we're going to tighten the bolt back in. And by tightening that bolt back in, it pops that clutch off. So we're not going to do that tonight. Wait, Dad. But I will show you when we do that. So... This is just uh, step number one. Heat, guys. Heat's the friend. All right, guys. I'm going to attempt to get this clutch off. I'm sure it's not going to come right off. Nothing's been that way on this motor yet. So, I got this end bolt out. And now I've got to pull this clutch off of that kind of a, a tapered metal spindle, if you will. What I'm going to try is drop in a couple sockets, and then I'm going to try to re-tighten this bolt back in that hole. So we'll drop the sockets in there, and now we're going to try to re-tighten this in there and see if that'll pull this, this wheel off. Because this wheel is threaded on the inside. I'm 
going to lay this down. Ooh, that moved. Or could it be that my motor is finally moving? That hasn't moved yet. Now all of a sudden it wants to choose to move. Okay, I'm gonna spray it and let it sit for a bit, I think. All right, we're, we were able to get this off using the pulley puller. Still wasn't easy. I've never been inside of one of these, so I don't really get to learn as I go. Obviously, there's my internal workings for my ignition. I don't know the health of them yet because I don't even know anything about this system. I'm just still trying to get it apart. I was hoping the bolts would be under this side to crack this main body in half. Unfortunately, I still got to pull this clutch off because the bolts are in here to knock this sucker in half. Uh, I, I did get this loose, but the other bits and pieces, nope, they don't even turn. And I do, when it comes to this clutch, I mean, I doubt I can get parts for this clutch. I'm just hoping I can get a clutch that fits that shaft. I think, I don't know what that is. There's all sorts of burnt crap in this clutch. These rollers, these rollers are bad, burnt. And this, I imagine, is a bearing in there that's completely burnt i don't know there again I, like i said i don't think i'm gonna use this clutch if i don't have to so i got that soaking because i still can't pop this off its shaft uh, when this sucker came off it made a loud boom and it blew it blew off so all right if i get further or when i get further i i will update this video all right I finally got half this clutch apart. There's this black plastic part here that's melted in there. That probably just melted from when I was heating that bolt up. Probably just like a plastic uh, washer or something. I'm not sure. And it took forever in a day to get that off. And this that should spin freely doesn't spin at all. You can see the rust on there. I've tried with the pulley puller pulling this section off and it is not coming. In fact, I start getting to the point where this looks like it's going to bend and break. So I'm going to spray it and let it sit for a while. I'm, I'm hoping to get that off. I mean, I know eventually I will, but I just want to get into here to reach these bolts so I can pull that sucker apart. And what I don't look forward to is I've got a, I got an identical motor to this, but I really don't fancy taking another one apart. And I don't know if these parts are readily available online or anywhere. I have no clue. So I'm hoping this motor is good. Guys, this is the end of the road for this original. This is the original out of my 69 Scorpion. You can see the inside of the, uh, that's, you know, the clutch part broke off. I've attached to here. I've tried everything, heat. This part should spin freely, doesn't. I can't pull any of this off. I've beat on it. I've, I've done everything for days trying to get that off. You can see my setup. Yep, even got a pair of garden shears in there. Uh, but even if I got that off, 
I cannot break this loose and it's not going to show up on camera but if you looked in on the sides on on these weights they're just big huge spots that are just gone rusted bye bye it's bad it is really bad and for as much as it's been soaking I mean I've got to be able to get this off just to even break this part thing apart and if I got it apart then what so I don't know it's 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 toast but I'm gonna show you something voila number two so when I bought the sled with that original motor that original motor, of course, sat out in the sled, sat outside for all those years. This guy in his barn kept this, or his garage shop, not a barn, to be technical. My other one, the original is a 290. That's a 280A. Still a 69. So in the, the original is a 290. That's the 280. Both of them are 69s. But this one here... Other than this, but I can use the cover off the other one, I can probably use both. But the beautiful thing is, I sprayed a little bit of WD-40 down the hole there, down the tank. Look, look at that. She turns. So, I'm thinking, all the way through it turns. So I'm thinking, because I already rebuilt that carburetor, and I really want to use one of these smaller original motors. I mean, originally why I bought that $50 one that I have a video on here, you know, the first time startup. I actually bought that for 50 bucks, and that was for my, I was going to do a mod for the 69 Scorpion, but now I'm just wanting to have it a little putt-putt that's more original. So that's that's why all of a sudden the change of heart to get one of these going. And uh, anyway, still I've got a, if I can get one of these going, the biggest mystery is going to be a track system. If any anyone viewing this has an idea for a track system or anything for sale that would work for a track system, even if there's quite a bit of mod for me to do to get it to work, uh, please, please leave me a, leave me a message. Shoot me, shoot me a message.